So first thing I'll say is visually, Blade Runner 2049 was incredible. One of the top five movies for cinematography probably this year. Mudbound, Florida Project, Lucky. This is right up there with them. The ships going by these neon signs and this whole hyper-capitalist, arcade, almost Tokyo-like environment. The kids with the sweatshop being mixed with the dump. It was just great images, so I can't say anything bad about the film visually, and the whole vibe and ambiance, it was very good. And then Jared Leto as the villain, I liked him a lot. We got this first scene of him where they dumped the new Android model out onto the floor, and I thought it was very powerful, the way he was blind and he used these floating orbs to see. I really liked it, but then they just completely dropped him off the map, and you barely saw him for the rest of the film, and you got this one shot of him at the end. It was just disappointing. And I really liked when he's talking to the hologram and he says, I'm ATCG, that's my DNA. You're only zeros and ones, so you're half as much, but it's twice as elegant. I really liked that. I hadn't heard that before, but other than that, I thought the dialogue was very forgettable. But this brings me to my main criticism, and it's the same I had with the original Blade Runner film. When I went into the original Blade Runner, it told me, the tagline was, this film explores what it means to be human, what makes us human. And I watched the movie, and I was very disappointed because I thought the movie didn't do that at all. Then I got around to reading the original book, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And it made me view the movie even worse because the book actually does address that question. I figured the book wouldn't since the movie wouldn't, but the book actually tackles that idea and takes a stand and says, no, these are the particular things that make humans humans and would make them different than potential androids. I find that both the Blade Runner films, they're just pro-android propaganda. They're just pandering to people who love androids. They say either androids would be just the same as us and almost indistinguish indistinguishable from us, which there's no reason to believe that that's the case. Like, sure, we create them so we would maybe try to make them seem like us, but even if we tried to make them seem like us, we don't really understand ourselves enough. They would probably be different than us. And also... Or, or else the movie says, look, they are different from us, they would be very different, but it doesn't matter because all life is valid and, you know, we should respect all forms of life, which is fine. I just don't think that's an interesting sci-fi idea. That's just a basic animal rights issue. So the same issues I had with the original Blade Runner came, carried over into this one, and they're big issues because I'm all for artists taking the ideas of other artists and using them I really enjoy that I don't I'm not on the plagiarism debate I think that it's fine to take the ideas of other people and I think that that's great but it's one thing with the Blade Runner film where they took the original ideas and the concepts the replicants and all these cool ideas but then they completely twisted the message so it was the exact opposite of what the book was saying the book was saying no there are distinct things that make humans humans and androids would be very different and this is dangerous the movie said ah oh, it's all kind of relative and you know humans and androids it's all you know it's all life and all should be respected and I think that that is questionable, especially after the guy who wrote the book is dead, for you to use his work and use it and then put a message on it that's completely contrary to the message of the book. And then the only real new twist that Blade Runner 2049 puts on this is the idea of a hybrid of um, between an android and a human having sex and giving birth. If you believe that Deckard was a human, if you believe Deckard's a replicant, I guess it's just androids being able to have sex and reproduce. And I don't know, when movies like The Vampire Diaries do this between werewolves and vampires, no one thinks it's deep. Just because you're doing it with androids, it's been done to death. It's not a deep idea. So the final takeaway that androids, humans, it's all relative and eventually we'll all have sex together and have babies and just be one big happy family, it's a nice message and it's one I agree with and I hope, but I don't find it interesting sci-fi conceptually to think about. And for me, this movie even moved farther away from the book than the first one, which I didn't like. In the first, in the book, they had this void camp test, and it was a test designed to tell humans from androids. And it was very interesting because the test actually came up with some things that it thought these are the ways humans would answer that are different from androids. And it was interesting. The film kind of made this test seem like it was just bullshit designed to oppress androids, which is fine, at least they still had that test. Now the new test was just, they were just barking questions and it had to do with his response um, rate, his heart, it completely lost any sense of like, what makes humans humans and how do we tell humans apart. So it was just more moving away from any integrity to the original source material. And then his relationship with his hologram and how the hologram 
uses a physical real girl to have sex with him. That was interesting, but it was just done better in the movie Her. So I'll give the movie some credit for that, but not too much credit. And Ryan Gosling, his boss, just couldn't have been more of a flat, forgettable character. He couldn't have been more of a flat, forgettable character. And I get it, they're trying to say, I guess maybe they're trying to say he's an android, he has muted emotions, but still it makes for, you know, a lackluster movie watching experience. The only character you see have any warmth or life is the hologram. And yeah, I get it, they're trying to say that, oh, these digital versions of life are even more human than real humans. But I don't think we need an entire movie full of flat, forgettable characters to drive home this point. So honestly, the people that are saying Blade Runner 2049 failed because audiences are too dumb and they were just not smart enough to pick up on all the subtle nuances, I just think there wasn't that much intelligent stuff there. Visually, it was great to look at. It was, it was a flawed film, though. It was way too long. It was slow. It just wasn't a good movie. And look, I feel it would have failed regardless. It could have been a good movie and it still would have failed at the box office. But it wasn't a good movie. So I think everyone complaining about it doing poorly at the box office, maybe you should just say, look, this wasn't a great film. If you like my review, I doubt you will because Blade Runner has such a dedicated fan base. Um, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, you can click my face at the end of the video to subscribe. If you leave a comment, let me know if you liked the movie, what you liked about it, any other movies you'd like me to review, or any other feedback on my reviews in general. Leave a comment, and I'll be sure to read and reply.